Hi everyone and welcome to another hashtag Ask Jim and we're up to episode 25, so we've hit the quarter of a century, Jim. You impressed right. with that at all or not? No. Well, I'm amazed. <laughs> You're amazed six months and we're still yeah. going. I, I... <laughs> I'm hoping to get to 50. 50 is the plan. If we get to 50, we'll be very happy. Um, just let everyone know that we're in a bit of a different area tonight. We've got the, uh, the training facility. So this is a big lecture theatre. So when all the new franchisees come to training, they actually sit in this very room. And this is where yourself and all our wonderful trainers um, give their talks. Um, it's around, how many seats are in here, Jim? Around 100 or 80? Like 180, I think. Something like that. So it's an old university um, lecture theatre. So if you do come along to training, this is where Jim will stand right in front of here and all that sort of stuff. Um, basically, thanks to everyone who came to the trade day, which was on Tuesday. So for those of you who don't know, Jim's mum has a trade day and all his suppliers come along. There was many of them there. And there was more than, what, 200 franchisees who came? Around about that number? About 180. 180 right? franchisees come. They get to try out some gear. There's lots of prizes. And we also had Nathan Templeman from Channel 7, who's a reporter you might see him on Sunrise. And he does a lot of Olympic stuff and he's a live crosses to them. So he's a connection of Ben Ward. And he came out and probably interviewed 30 to 40 people large range of franchisees, franchisors, and Jim himself, and that video montage is up on the Jim's group channel. So thanks again to Ben Ward for hooking that up. Just remember, we do have a podcast called The Jim's Cast, so all these live audio uh, sessions get put onto a podcast and released every Tuesday we do too. Also, we have Jim's Shop, so last week we got asked the question, is there a special discount code for franchisees? And to test that you're watching, the code is JimsFSC20. If you punch JimsFSC20 into the Jim's Shop on jims.net, you get 20% off any shirts or hats like that. Um, tonight, again, we always give away books for our favourite questions. So people will know that one there. Bio history. So I'll give you that one, Jim. Yeah, yeah, you're a lovely face on it. That's me. Yeah. <laughs> and we'll put the bio history one there as well. So for those of you who don't know, bio history is there. And we obviously have Jim's book, which is the most recent one. So uh, Beck and Jill, before I introduce them, we'll, all gonna, we'll, we'll hand these out as well. So three at the end. So jump on there and leave some questions on the live feed and we'll give you some stuff there. And new con every week. So if you're not following Jim's group and Jim Penman on Instagram or Twitter or Facebook, please do. So his handle is at the Jim Penman. And obviously Jim's group, just punch in Jim's group. We've got all our stuff on there. Um, and make sure, uh, you, if you're a new franchisee watching to this as well, you check out the mentors list that's available on Jim's online. There's mentors in each state. You want to make a point of making sure that we mention it every uh, live stream that you do use it. So now I'm going to get into it. And we have with me Beck. Rebecca Rainbow and Jill Stallworthy, who uh, run our, do a fantastic job of running our call centre. So for those of you who don't know, we have an on-site uh, call centre here. How many roughly employees do you have under your banner? Currently we have 31 staff yep. and we have six in the management team and we're hiring another six staff to cope with the demands over the coming months. And that's obviously coming up to spring, obviously it gets really flat yeah. out. And and I, as you know, we lost three staff recently to national office. Yeah. <laughs> we keep on pinching on their best staff, which is actually, they're incredible. We've got um, Hannah, who's who's running one of our divisions now. Like she's at the moment, she's overseas and coming back, we hope. And uh, Ginny's doing a fantastic job in sales. So uh, it, it's, it's great, great recruitment. <laughs> yeah, it is. And they're, and they're yeah. great because they, they lose their best people and they don't complain too much, do you? No, no too we suck it up. Yeah. Well, we love them because um, obviously they know the system really well. Obviously, yeah. familiar with uh, internal software like FMS4 and all that sort of stuff. It's just a way easier integration than getting someone from outside and teaching them about mm. everything. So they've done really, really well. I never think we don't have had one that doesn't hadn't work out. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, an, they're an amazing bunch. They really are. Call center is very hard. And I've, I've, I've answered the calls myself a lot in the early days too. So it's very tough. Somebody who succeeds at that it, it can do almost anything. Do you think Jim would make the grade now? Uh, no. <laughs> um, sorry, Jim. Thanks, Jill. I know you know your divisions, yeah. but when you think we have 566 service codes across 54 divisions, I need a lot of training to be able yeah, to do it. Because when I was doing it, it was just mowing. That was it. There's a lot going on in there. Sorry. Yeah. There's a couple of relevant questions tonight to this, so we'll get straight into it. But um, sure. how long have you actually, before we really go into it, how long have you actually run or and operated the uh, call centre? Uh, it'll be 14 years. Um, in, January, in February, February 1st of Feb next year. Next year. Yeah. And, and before that, you worked for me in other... Yep, so, so that's right. Jill's been around since the art. And, and, and <laughs> <laughs> but she's still young and beautiful. And Rebecca is her daughter. That's yes, right. that's correct. But your husband is also a franchisor for those. And we've had Stuart on, who was our first guest, so Stuart Rainbow's a mowing franchisor, so yeah. ingrained in the gym's fabric. Mm. 
Okay, okay, so let's get into it. So we had some questions before. For, so it's a bit different this week. So we have the, uh, the conferences on. So we're actually in the lecture theatre for a reason. We've got a lot of test and tag, Jim's handyman, nine conferences going on. They're all having dinner and beers at the moment. So that's a lot more entertaining than coming in here, which is no problem at all. And pest control as well, sorry. So turn on pest control of their conferences. So what we happen is uh, Jake and uh, Craig went around before, got some questions from everyone. We're going to read these out now. So we've got some for Jill, for Jill and Beck tonight and some for Jim as well. And if you're on the live stream, leave them in the comments and we'll try and get to them. So there's 50 people tuning in. So thank you for watching. And always remember, we cross post. So I can't see your comments in real time unless they're left on the Jim's group page. So make sure you leave them on the Jim's group page so we can see you in real time. And there's a few people tuning in. So before we get into it, let's acknowledge them. So Richard's tuned in. Kim, Leanne, Sal, John again. Matt Sheldon is a franchisee up north. Jason from Pool Care. Andrew says hi, and Aaron Putty's gone, how good is the PA system in the auditorium? So he must have installed it from Jim's antennas, I would say. So you've done a good job, Aaron. All right, so let's get into it. So Eric from Jim's Mobile Cafe has left us, who gave us a question before. So this is for Jill and Beck. Um, and he's asked, what is the funniest call you've ever taken? We've had actually quite a few. Um, we had um, one probably about two years ago where we had someone who actually requested um, a pest, what is it? Uh, what's the name? This one. Possum? Oh, they had pet possums in their roof and they asked for a pet door to be installed in the roof so the possums could come and go at their own leisure. <laughs> <laughs> so that was one we've had, but we've had a lot more and I've got a list of them here. We asked for guinea pig grooming, we've been asked for rounding up pe peacocks, a group of peacocks that came out of somebody's property. I was going to say um, a nightclub, but that's all right. <laughs> no, it was for pest control. Yeah. We've had some really funny ones. One of the funniest ones, which wasn't a request so much, but it was a funny one, this man actually rang into the call centre, and Kim, who's been with us as long as I've been here, she started three weeks after me, actually, took the call, and this guy actually said, my name is Russell, and I'm um, a little upset, as I'm a possum you tried to catch. He seriously thought he was a possum. And he said his wife was upset too. He then asked, um, oh, Kim said she wasn't sure what was going on. And so she sort of said, okay, so um, do you know the name of the person that actually um, contacted you? And he said, um, oh, and she apologised that they were upset, thinking it was a prank but not sure how to take it. But this guy was actually really serious. He went on to say that he was a common... Um, what was it called? A ringtail possum. Oh, I've got it here. It was a common, he was a common brush tail, brush tail, but his wife was a lead feeder possum and they were very rare. He also went to say that he, the franchisee called him a sneaky little critter and he took great offence to that because he was in fact a marsupial. <laughs> so I don't know how Kim held it together, but this guy was, and in the end he just thanked her and said, she said, look, I'll pass that on. Very professionally said, I'll pass that on. And in the end, Kim said, he just said, oh, we're off now, we're going to find a new home. <laughs> uh, go figure. <laughs> we get some funny calls. So that's just an example of what you guys have to cop on a daily basis. <laughs> we, so, have, we all have a laugh, though. It's a really, thing. Yeah, you do obviously share the recordings amongst yourself and all that sort of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, we have a chat about it. Yeah. <laughs> so if you're watching at home, if you are doing that sort of silly stuff, we will all hear about it. And we've got a fun in the course, and they're always, they're always having all these competitions and celebrations and things posted up and stuff. It's been, very, very lively, lively in there, isn't it? Yeah, we, we do our best. You have a good culture, though. Like, you have regular massages, people, yeah. therapists come in and all that sort of stuff. Like, yeah. we don't get that, Jim. Uh, hint, like hint. Yeah. <laughs> what else do we do, Beck? What have we yeah, recently we, been doing? Yeah, um, we've been doing a winter program, so in the quieter months we do um, some well, training. Um, we get some food trucks to come out um, and just uh, so have a little bit of fun. Yeah, the taco truck was out here today. Yeah, the taco yeah? truck was here yeah. today, yeah. So we, we just try to make a little bit, bit of fun over the winter um, months when it's a little bit quieter. And we can do it. education. Yeah, absolutely. Now we've Learning. had a few franchisors come in, divisional franchisors, and they've done really well um, in, in educating our staff. Because when we're busy, we're busy. We don't get a chance to do that. So it's really nice when we can actually have the opportunity to educate them. When you've got that many divisions and you've got staff who are 18 and never owned a house, as an example, conveyancing, building inspection, hazmat, these sort of divisions, they don't know a lot about. So when we have people come out and speak to our staff, it's, it's so valuable. Mm. Yeah, do you wish more people did it? Like, is there something that's oh, easily arranged? Oh, we invite them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. So they can just shoot you an email or something like that and they can just come yeah. out or any time when they're here, come down to three-week training, they can come in and... Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, we did a staff survey, and that's where we've been doing it for a few years anyway, but the staff survey sort of predicts what they want to know about and what they want to know more about, and that's how we, how we run it. 
Great. The, the girls in there are really great, actually. I put out a competition, not a competition, but a sort of a request lately. I said, if you've got any ideas, we'd love to hear them. And we we're offering um, $50. That's $100, that one. Hundreds, yeah. $50, yeah. $100 vouchers. So an amazing number of good ideas come out of the course of that. Mm. Yeah, and they get forwarded through to me, can we do this? Yeah. I've got to go around with it. It's got yeah, know. extra work. <laughs> it is a lot. Of terrific <laughs> ideas, too, as I went around giving out vouchers and so forth. Yeah. Actually, That's very true. It's, it's fun. So thanks for that question, Eric. So I'll get on to another one here. So I don't know, is John from Handyman in here? No, he's not. I'll read this one out for John because this goes to what you just were talking about before. It's a great question for you guys as well. It's what I'm interested in, actually. Um, how do you know which division to give a job to? So if someone rings up and says, oh, we've got so many service codes, as you said, yeah. how do they know which service code? That, was it 500 or? 566. 566. So when yeah. they ring up and say, I need this, how do they associate it and allocate it to the right service code? So I guess it's, it's asking um, questions and most clients will call and say, I want my lawns mowed or I want my um, you know, trees pruned. But you know, leading from that, trees pruned, it could go to mowing, it could go to the trees division. So we have specific questions that we ask um, in that situation, we'd ask um, about the height of the tree, is it, is it at the single storey gutter height? And that determines where we send it. Um, so we just, we have processes in place to be able to um, make sure we send it to the right division and, and the staff are trained to do that. Now, if it gets sent to the wrong division, then what happens then? Well, we usually find out pretty quickly. Right, um, and <laughs> I can imagine, yeah. <laughs> uh, that usually happens pretty quickly. Well, the wrong city is another one too. Yeah. I had a complaint from a client who, we rang for one state and got a different state. She said he thought a thousand kilometres was a bit too far from the car. <laughs> Probably a little bit far, yeah. yeah. But in terms yeah. of the number of jobs you do, the, yeah. the margin of error would be very small. Oh, it is. Compared to the amount of jobs we send out. They actually. get remarkably few wrong, but yeah. they do occasionally. Yeah. yeah. But the beauty is we've got the core recording, so we can always yes. listen to the calls, identify what the problem was, and resolve it. Hmm. So it's not a long process. Yeah. Hmm. Thanks for that question from John. That was a really good one. So we've got a question from Jason, who's in a supplier in the audience here. So Jason, was there a Jason here from Ego? Yep, do you maybe want to yell out your question? This one was for Jim. Uh, you're just um, talking about uh, the move from petrol products to cordless and where you see the, the benefits um, to franchisees from an OH&S and um, you know, that carbon neutral footprint. Yes, uh, Ego makes cordless mowers, as you probably worked out, so we've been, uh, they're, they're great actually. I, I personally, my own equipment that I, I cut my own lawn with is a, is a, it's not one of yours, but it's a, um, it's, it's one of those, and it's fantastic because it's very quiet. You just release the handle when you're going over gravel or something, so it, 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 the blade stops spinning, and uh, it's, they're fantastic, I love them, and there's not so much vibration as well. And that the less maintenance. The only problem at the moment is you've got to change the batteries fairly often. But uh, we're talking about some neat stuff today, setting up something in in the, the, the car or the, the trailer, so that you can actually you can actually put your your batteries that when they use back on there and get powered by a solar panel. They can get recharged during the day without without electricity. I think it's fantastic. I think it's the way of the future, really. As they get better and as the batteries get better. And some of, some of your stuff is, is fantastic. I was thinking I was giving a bit of a try, the brush cutter and stuff. It's, it's, it's great. I think it is the way of the future, especially as the batteries get better. I think you're saying yesterday, you had a big chat there, Stan, and you went to a few stands, and that was the same thing you always said. You love it, but this is that battery, that battery life. It's always the battery life. It's always the battery life. I'm, I'm going to have a go with one of yours, actually. They're going to lend me one, and I'll take it up to the farm and give it a go. It takes me three batteries to cut my, cut my lawn at the farm, so I, I <laughs> see, how, see how good your, your stuff is. So hopefully, so that, do you get many requests though when people ring up about that? I know obviously being environmentally friendly now is a big thing for companies and that. Do you get many customers ringing up asking about, like do they use certain cleaning products that's environmentally friendly or? Cleaning yeah, products, cleaning, yeah. spraying yeah. pesticides, yeah. things like that, definitely. So mm -hmm. people are really concerned when they ring up, they, they want to make sure that's yeah, that. Definitely more. Yeah, there's a big thing about glyphosate now, um, <coughs> Roundup, that, that people don't like it because there's all sorts of problems and suggestions that might cause cancer. So there's new products coming out all the time that help that. Mm -hmm. Think about um, the, uh, Battery mowers too. It's about a sound because in some areas they can't, they can't yeah, even yeah. use powered mowers, you know, close to clubs, for example. Mm -hmm. So there's all kinds of environmental concerns, and obviously we try and learn about those and, and give them what they want. Mm -hmm. That's a good question, and thanks for that one, and thanks for attending the conferences. So I've run through a few people who are tuning in now. So Liz Ten Hoopen's gone. Hi, Liz and John. Jim's dog watch South Australia. We're driving over from Adelaide, but still listening. See you all soon, which is great. Hi Caruso, please give a shout out to Nigel from Jim's Car Detailing South Australia and Shane Charnstrom and Danny from Jim's Cleaning SA. I take it they're there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Kyle said, All right, cool. All right, let's get into it. All right, so another question here. This would be for you guys, uh, Beck and Jill. So this was from Belinda. 
So I'll read this one just to get through it. Um, how many complaints does the call centre a year get? We might have, I don't know if you touched on that one. Wouldn't know off the top of our head, actually. Um, we'd have to look into that and get back to you. I can tell you the percentage. It's yeah. three quarters of 1%. There you mm -hmm. go. I just, just looked at it. That's <laughs> how many calls you take in a year? I think it's about 720,000, something like that, calls in a year. Mm. So it's about three quarters of 1%. So it used to be like 5% and it's gone down over the years, 1.5%, 1%, let us just three quarters of a percent, mm, which, is, which is the statistic that matters the most. Yeah, and as, we, as that's happened, we've actually found, as the complaints have gone down, the, the volume of leads has gone up mm, quite mm. dramatically. Like last year, 180,000 unserviced leads. And I, I believe the two are very closely connected. Mm. So, that's, so that's sort of something you want to talk about. Now, you obviously want to cut that in half. There's reason to you do with someone from Founder. You're adamant that you really want to get that by half. Was that by the end of this year or next year? When was that? I'd like over the next twelve months. I'd like to see if we can. Yeah. yeah. And how do you think you can achieve that? What measures are you putting in place? Um, one of the things we're we're looking at doing is is um, people who get complaints send them as a little little training video to be done and answer a few questions. Or if they get too many quality complaints, spend some time with a franchisor. We've got to sort of be careful of this because sometimes franchises can feel very pressured. Uh, and, and they can get quite upset about complaints. So we've got to be, try and have a balance between, you know, the people who are genuinely good and just occasionally get an unfair complaint, treating them fairly generously, and then as against people who get far too many complaints. Because most of our complaints are about 20% of our franchisees. So you want to maybe talk about that thing you introduced with the six-month thing? Like yeah, so, so one of the things we're actually asked, I've asked the programmers to do is to give us a capacity to basically delete a complaint without firm evidence. I, always, I delete complaints every day when there's any kind of evidence that they're wrong. Like if somebody says, nobody contacted me, and they say, here's the phone call, here's the SMS I sent to follow up, which is vital, wipe the complaint. But sometimes there's a good story, but not proof. So we're saying, okay, if you get a complaint and the franchise all reckons it's an unfair complaint, and you haven't had any complaints deleted in the last six months, we'll wipe it. Provided you've got a 4.6 rating or better. So you, for you guys, Jill and Beck, what's the procedure for you when there's a complaint? Like how do they identify this, if it actually is a complaint or is there anything like that? Or you just get them to document it down and it goes through or how does it work from your end? Oh, we have a pretty um, black and white process when it comes to dealing with complaints. So um, that's been set by Jim largely. Um, and that's, um, you know, some things that uh, the client may not necessarily be complaining about. Um, they call back and say, oh, I haven't heard from uh, the franchisee. It's been mm -hmm. two and a half hours. They may not actually be complaining, but for us in our system, it is a complaint. Because so, you've got two hours to that's right. call back. Yeah. So um, anything outside of that, uh, the staff know, you know, it's fairly black and white. That's a complaint. Um, quality complaints are probably easier to identify because the client does call and, mm -hmm. and verbalise that. And if they get a clearly. complaint, don't call up you and complain about it. They should go to Jim. So that's the policy. Because <laughs> I know we had a franchisee before he actually came on air tonight, a skipping franchisee. He was, you were talking, this very thing we were talking about, he was yeah. quite upset about a complaint. And obviously you gave him some advice about from the customer's yeah. perspective. So what, what actually happened in this case is that the client complained. What, what happened is he, he, the client wanted a, a picture of the bin because they wanted to know how much, how big the bins were. This is skip bins. And what he did is he sent them back a picture of the listing of the prices, you know, two cubic metres bin so-and-so. And he said, well, I gave them a picture of my price list. And I said, no, but they asked for a picture of the bin because they don't know how big a bin is. You know, I know how big a two metre bin is. He certainly does, but the client doesn't. So it's not a serious complaint, but the client asked for something and you didn't give it to them and they were just a bit narked about it. So it's, it's, it's minor, but still, you know, they've got a one-star server and they're going to use somebody else in future and stuff. So it's, it's, not, it's not good. So I just said to him, you've got to learn that when they say a picture of a bin, they mean a photo of a bin, hmm. not a picture of your, <laughs> your prices. Yeah, yeah. So I was going to say to you guys before, with, when you mentioned about the number of service codes, I didn't know it was actually that many. Yeah. Do you guys wish that it would actually be condensed down? Uh, to a point. I mean, you look at it and you look at a division like, like handyman, um, they have a lot of codes, but then their codes are necessary for welding, for bricklaying, for um, whether it be plastering, whether it be. They, not everyone does it. Mm. So, how do you pick and choose? Mm. Um, it's also important to get it right, too, because it's a, it's a very common. I go through all the poor star ratings every day, and one of the most common complaints is that from a client is that they get sent somebody who can't do the job. That's right. And then and they get upset about it, and then they try and pass it back to the office, and that 
sometimes that works, sometimes there's nobody available. So it, it's sort of, it's very off-putting to the client to be yeah. given somebody who can't do it. Yeah, it's not a great customer experience. So as much as there's a lot of them, I think they are necessary. Mm. Um, you'd I agree? agree yeah. yeah. That's a great one. Um, okay, so we're going to go one from Teresa. Is Teresa in the audience at all? Do you want to maybe yell at your question, Teresa? Hi. Um, apart from mowing, what's your favourite division? <laughs> <laughs> they asked me that last week, and I know I'm supposed to say dog wash because all the doggy people are up the back there. I've got to say, Sharon is one of my favourite divisionals, so there you are. That's all right. So Sharon's been great. And she's been on me in the past in, 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 in Facebook Live, and, and she's. Dog wash division is dynamite. It's going really, really well. Well, we'll just follow up quickly with a question from Sharon. And so, Sharon, you had a question. Maybe you want to yell at the gym, or do you want me to ask? I think I got set up for this one. Okay. Um, is that the one? About shouting the next conference. Will Jim shout your next, yeah. the next conference? <laughs> <laughs> I, got set up, but I heard that the gym conference is on YouTube. Yes, I will, I'm happy to shout at the next conference. <laughs> 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 so, you can get me there when you pay for everything, and I'll come and shout at you if you like. So, there you are. Yeah, we should have put a comma after that one. That would have been made a bit more sense, but I get you. Yeah. I was going to say to you guys, what about you? Do you have any particular favourite division? I know it's putting you on the spot. And... Um, Could you obviously deal with such a number of different people from different backgrounds and divisions and all sorts of stuff? Do you have any... Who are the nicest franchisees? Come on, tell us that one. Which division do you have the nicest, most pleasant franchisees? I think Test and Tag franchisees yeah. are not Test and Tag? Yeah. Test and Tag. No. And That's not to say the others aren't nice, but no. Test and Tag franchisees are lovely. <laughs> <laughs> So everyone else, you to tell me, what are the dog wash franchisees like? Tell us that one. They're lovely they too. Lovely. They're lovely yeah. too, aren't we they? We honestly don't have no, many franchisees that don't ring in and Their clients uh, are lovely. Nice. Dog wash clients are lovely. Yeah, yeah they really definitely. are. Yeah, there you are. All right. So there we go. So I'll get into a few questions here. There's 50 people watching, which is great. So welcome everyone at home. Make sure you interact in the live feed. You'll see a little gif of Jim pop up, depending if you like, share, or comment in the live stream. So we'll get through a few questions here. So let me get through a few comments first. So Robert Skaz has gone, hey Jim, amazing to see such a hands-on business owner. Parting with plenty of wise words, true Aussie icon. You get that quite a bit, Aussie icon. <laughs> Aussie icon and Jim's is always the thing we get. Yes. True blue, fair income. Well, I put, yeah. my, I put my name on, on the, my logo, so I suppose it gives me an advantage, doesn't it? It does, so, it does. So I get to another question here from Job, and he's, we get this question a lot because we've got conferences this week. It's quite appropriate. When will the indoor gym be done? So when will Jim have his own oh, gym? Oh, my goodness. The outrageous council is horrible. <laughs> Worst council in the state. We've been fighting with them. You wouldn't believe I wouldn't even tell you what they've done lately. So you got it approved, didn't you? You haven't got it approved. No, no, we're still fighting over it. They want some building to be done to safe from fire. I mean, I don't know why building a gym should mean that suddenly we're a great fire risk. And just, it's incredible. Every time you get everything done, they say, oh, here's another thing you've got to do. And here's another expert you've got to do. And there's another expert. And then they've got to fight it out and work out between themselves. It is the most unbelievably hard thing. And like we had five, last week we had five people asking for a gym. We want to put a gym, but the council, it's been two years. Just to put a gym in, you would think it would be so easy. So for the young people watching at home, we flick that gym's gym meme around. What's the council we can tag? And Yarra, Yarra Rangers. Yarra it's Rangers, right. the worst right. council in the state, if not the country. DM them that logo. Eight. Gym needs a gym. Get it going. Gym needs a gym hashtag. DM the Yarra Council Rangers. Yarra, Yarra Rangers Council. Yarra Rangers Council on if their Facebook in... and Instagram. If they've got one, DM them and smash them with it. Yeah. And get Jim his gym. Yeah, horrible. All right, so we want that meme to come to life. Actually have Jim in his gym. And we'll take some workout videos with you in the gym. So get it done. Okay, so we've got Shane here with a question as well. So he's gone, are you going to come out with a battery, a range of uh, products with, with batteries? So if asking you maybe, are you going to come out with batteries and stuff as a brand maybe? No. No. So there we go. <laughs> That's a nice I'll leave there. that to the experts. Yeah. Thank you very so much. There you go over there. We've got AEG and there's a whole bunch of other ones there. I think one of the things we've learned hard is that we focus on what we are good at which is a very limited number of things. We're very good at service franchising, going out to somebody. We don't want to compete in fast food. We wouldn't do gyms. We had a bit of a try that year, it was disastrous. We don't understand that business. We are excellent at a business that says, someone who wants to ring in, get a come to come out and give them a service. That is our speciality. Yeah, we get that all the time, you know, when you're doing like a hungry gyms or yeah. competing with Uber. People think that because you're good at one business, you're going to be good at something else, but that's actually a delusion. Yeah, that's exactly really, right. Really, you've got to know what you're good at and stick to that. That's it. It's and even though we've got 50 plus divisions, it's really all the same kind of thing. There's not a lot of difference in the way no. you answer a call no. for mowing or cleaning our antennas or dog wash or anything. They're all very 
very comparable, very similar yeah, principles similar. to our callbacks, you know, complaint systems, the whole lot of it. We're, we're good at what we do. I'll ask you a question then, uh, Beck and Jill. How, are you surprised by how much the brand has stretched then from your 14 years? So when 14 um, years ago, how many divisions did we have 14 years ago? Do you remember roughly? Oh, it's hard to remember, but I wouldn't say more than 20. Yeah, more mm. than 20. Mm. Are you surprised how far it's obviously gone across? Yes, and, absolutely. Yeah. Exactly. And do you guys get requests from people saying, do you, you should do this or have you done this? or? Um, we used to get some, and we still get some, Concreting's one. Concreting, um, right. We did have Concreting years ago. Um, but Concreting's one, off the top of my head. Um, that's right, that's yeah. partly how we go into the new divisions anyway, because you yeah. see a demand for it. They always, they always um, take note of any request for mm. a service we haven't got, and that's an indication that's probably something worth looking into. Well, a lot of the, the newer divisions have been born that way, because clients have requested it or asked us if we provide the service, and because we haven't, um, we kept a tabby on it and it's mm. gone to the sales team. Well, it's curious, you know, the strength of the brand. Like, like I don't know if I said this before, but the we had a survey done in South Australia on glass companies, glazing companies, mm. and they, they had a couple of local ones, and they had O'Brien's, which is by far the biggest glass company in the country, and they had Jim's Glass. And, and O'Brien's was better known than the local independents, as you might expect, but by far the best known brand in terms of, I definitely use them, was Jim's Glass. Mm. And Jim's Glass didn't actually exist. Mm. <laughs> it was just an attempt to see whether there was a market for it. That's amazing. So they decided to go ahead and start Jim's Glass. Mm. That's how building inspections started with Paul Comerford. He actually went out to um, some auctions and stuff and said, who would you buy if Jim, Jim's building inspections didn't exist? So he done a bit of market testing. Would you do Jim's building inspections or this? I think it was like 80% or something they would go with that. He said, right, mm. I'm going to start a division. Mm. And that's pretty much how it started out there. And it's now by far, it started about eight years ago, and it's now by yeah. far the biggest building inspections company in the country. It is easily. But it was pretty much a bit of market research. Went out there and tested the market, said, would you do, you know, how, would you use Jim's building inspections or this mob? And 80% that. But we, the comment we always see online, though, which it does, it does annoy you, but it, I know it's not true, is because we stretch the brand so far, it's always, you know, what will Jim throw his hand at next, blah, 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 blah. But maybe you want to talk about when we do stretch to a new division or whatever, how much of an expert that person actually is in that actual uh, field they're going into? Well, <laughs> they are experts. That's yeah. what we do. We recruit people who, to, to launch a division, we don't launch an idea, we launch a business. So we find somebody who's already in that business and we... And we get, and they're the ones that bring in and write the manuals and set up the operations and work out how you can make at least sixty bucks an hour, which is a requirement of any new division at gyms. And um, and then and then we train others to do that properly. So we always we always buy in the expertise. We bring in people who know that business and get them to set things up. So we don't have to be an expert. The, the, the curious thing is, I'm actually pretty incompetent at almost anything. <laughs> Um, honestly, I, I can mow I can mow a decent lawn and dig a garden bed, but I'm not even a particularly expert gardener. But as to doing something like test and tag or antennas or handyman, if anything to be done around the house, my wife will pick up the hammer, not me, because she's much better than I am. So, is there any exactly. divisions that surprise you then, actually, how well they did? Maybe like when they first started up, you'd sort of maybe go, oh, that might not work, or is there anything that maybe takes you? Mm. Well, not really, not not. So they all, you're all, you know, they all work, so that's all good. Yeah, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't think any have stood out as, um, that's a bit strange. Yeah. Um, building inspections was probably a little bit different to what we handled before. That was the one I was going to say, because I started yeah. out using it when that started, I was the same as you, or didn't know much about yeah, it. Yeah, it was something we didn't know a lot about, mm. but it's yeah. it, it certainly... But building inspections, success. I think one of the reasons it's a good division, it, it's what I call the fear factor. If you're going to have something done like, well, cleaning a house, for example, if you don't clean it very well, somebody can clean it next week, but if you have somebody inspect a building and then miss an important structural defect, and then they buy the house on that basis, and suddenly this mm. has to be re-stumped for $35,000. Mm. You need to know who you're dealing with, because you need to know, first of all, that the people who are doing it are competent, and secondly, if something goes wrong, somebody will do something about that, which is what we do. If mm. they miss something in Jim's building inspections, we'll actually get the insurance policy, and we'll go back and we'll fix the house. In one case, it was cost over $100,000 to fix the house because the person bought it without knowing there were certain issues there. Yeah, and that's, that's and with building inspection, because it's a, most of the time it's a visual inspection, people, it's not an invasive inspection, right? So mm. it's definitely a little bit harder sometimes to pick that up, but clients obviously don't. But if they don't pick yeah. it up, then, then we'll look after the client because the client's always got to be taken care of. Yeah, people watching at home don't know, but actually you get involved in the insurance claims. Mm. So I used to work in there, I know you do. And um, the underwriters don't like it sometimes, but. You actually get involved. If the customer comes to you, you will pay out of your own pocket 
to get it sorted and put the claim back afterwards. Yeah, because yeah, the customer's always going to be looked after. If the insurance company doesn't pay, we have a thing called a warranty fund. So each new franchisee puts an amount of money, usually about a hundred bucks, sometimes up to two thousand, that goes into a fund that we operate. So if we need to fix an issue, a problem, then we will pay for that and then work out if we can get it out of the franchisee. Mm. But we had one particular franchisee who, um, actually he was in building inspections and, and unusually he was a very um, poor operator and he was basically a scumbag. What he did is he went out and took a whole lot of money from a whole stack of different clients for work that he never did. And he just walked away and said, I'm not, I'm not going to do anything about that. So what we've done is we went, fixed them up, we either did the inspection, paid for it, or refunded the client, and then now we're going to, we're going to chase this guy legally. Because even though we don't normally chase ex-franchisees for anything, when you've done that kind of rip-off, yeah. it certainly deserves to be taken to court. Yeah, that's a good point. So I get through a few people watching now, it's around 50 plus people watching on the live stream, so welcome, and make sure you leave a question or a comment, you'll get a little gift that will come up, and we'll also award three books at the end of the show. So Nathan Buchanan has gone on here, does the call centre receive many calls for a taxi slash Uber service? No, no. I, don't, no? I can't recall anyone ever mentioning we received any calls for that yet. I'm surprised. I know, the, I know the BDM team are looking at Jim's rides, so I know there's someone... We had uh, Jim's um, limousines, or Jim's limos was something that was considered in the past, and somebody was interested in that. Hmm. So, yeah, that's possible. But you wouldn't try and compete with Uber. I mean, they're too... They've got billions of dollars. That's really tough. Hmm. We, we, we're the big fish in our pond. We, we do what we do very well. Let's not compete with those multi-billion dollar companies, thanks very much. <laughs> thanks for that one, Nathan. <laughs> um, Graham was going to hide from Jim's dog wash Forbes. Can you say hi to Sharon for me? Thank you. Well, we did, Graham. So hi to yeah, Sharon from Graham from <laughs> Forbes. <laughs> we've got a few more dog wash people tuning on the other feed, which is Samantha Lamb. And we've got Kim McGavick from over in, in NZ. Okay, and then Patrick Butler's gone. Any plans on a trade day for mowing in Queensland? So we obviously have it in Victoria every year. There's been a request before to take it into state, but be great to do it, but it's really the local franchisors that have got to get behind it mm. because that's, that's what happened in Victoria. It wasn't so much national, it's the franchisors that do things in gyms. Yeah, that's true. So I guess, Patrick, if, if the answer is if you if you ask your franchisor and there's nothing interesting. I know New South Wales did it for, for a bit. They've had a couple of trade shows and done their own. Yeah. The suppliers will come along. So Victoria's easy because we've got the numbers here. Yeah. We've got more in Victoria than any other state by far. But we'd love to we'll give whatever support and advice we can to help them to do it. I think it's great. Yeah, there's no there's no reason why not, Patrick. So talk to your franchise or maybe at your meetings and stuff, raise it and get I'm sure suppliers would love to come around your captive audience and go there and do all that sort of stuff and replicate what we've done down here. So I'll go through one of the questions that were left here as well. And this is from Joe and Rachel that have the similar question. And which was the funniest request you've ever had. So maybe the funniest request for a job or something like that. Then the follow up with that was the funniest complaint. Funniest complaint. We had a complaint the other day, actually, if you want funny. Um, a franchisee was doing the work, and I won't say what division, um, providing the service, and he asked if the client if he could use the toilet. And she had no problem in using the toilet. And then she rang up and complained because he did number twos in the toilet, not number ones. <laughs> and she wanted to make a complaint. And we're like, he can't put a, put a complaint in for that when, in fact, He's got permission, sort, to use the toilet. So people do they make some funny complaints. That was only this week. So Only this week? That's a yeah. Fresh, yeah. So it's a fresh one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> Most sense. Can you think of any maybe more? Any more that come to mind? Or you've got a bit down there? Um, so no, the more the better, I reckon. We can try and get a few out there. Good. Well, uh, Mm. Funny complaints. I mean, it's probably not funny to the client, but I remember one where a client called in to say that um, their golden retriever had been shaved yeah. like a poodle. Yeah. Um, and yeah, they were quite distraught by the way that the, the dog came back to them. But, um, it was more that it had the little puffy yeah, thing on the top. Yeah, it had the whole poodle thing going on. And, <laughs> and he said he was so embarrassed to walk it down yeah, the street. <laughs> he was really upset. I've heard he was, before, it's yeah, a ripper. He was very upset. <laughs> he was so. upset. I'd love to get it animated. <laughs> I'd love to get an animated <laughs> what, shot online. What are they going to do about that? Yeah, I mean, you well, have to you, fix you wait till it grows yeah. out. Well, he said himself, he can't. He actually said you can't sew the hair back on. Yeah, yeah that's what he, he said. Yeah. He said that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he said, Kenny, I think I can't remember the, the lady Kathy. I think was doing a really can, great job, yeah, and you can, can actually hear her trying not, so hard not to laugh. Yeah. Yeah. And, then, and then she started accidentally, you know, letting it out after a while, which probably infuriated even more. Yeah, that's right. And then um, it was very quite funny. I can't remember who the franchise all was. I think it might have been. Aaron but dog wash people are usually a lot more professional, aren't you? Mm, you yeah. don't shave golden retrievers <laughs> to look like poodles. <laughs> That was a long time ago. Yes, it was a while ago. It was yeah, a very long, long time, time ago. ago. 
So we have the funniest requests then. So that's a complaint sort of stuff. Requests. Any funny um, requests? I can't think of a request off the top of my head. Mm. Um, so we're going to bring up asking to meet Jim because I get a lot of social stuff saying that. No. no. Well, we we don't, like people used to ask whether he was real, real or if he yeah, exists. I think now people, now that you're a bit more up and about on media, media like, people see yeah, you. Yeah. Yeah. So, but that <laughs> was a very it. common thing. Is, is he real? Um, so that was probably. Um, yes. You are real. Obviously, you come here every Wednesday and do this. So I'm going to go through a couple of the questions on the other feeds here. So we've got one from Jared Vanderwall. He's gone, what does, uh, what does he make of the recent record high of the ASX 200? It's a completely off topic. So economic oh, question. The, the, um, yeah, that's very interesting, isn't it? Um, do you have many shares? No, I, I, don't, I just own gyms. I would not invest in anybody else's company. I invest in myself. If I've got any money, I pour it back into gyms to do something to make gyms better. That's all about all of my research. Um, Look, it's an interesting situation now. Um, interest rates are so ridiculously low. It's it's incredible. Uh, it's unprecedented. Like you, people can borrow money for housing for as little as three percent, which is which is crazy. So anybody who's got money, what's the point of giving to the <coughs> bank where you might, if you're lucky, get one and a half percent, which is inflation. So you basically, and that actually in, in a lot of countries, you can give money to the government at negative interest rates. So what are you going to do with your money? You're going to buy property or you're going to buy shares. You've got to buy something that at least keeps pace with inflation. So I think it's not surprising given given ultra, ultra low interest rates because what else can, can people do with their money? Hmm. But where, So you obviously invest it back in a business, but do you have any other investments on the side, like properties no. or anything like that? Oh, no. no. The, the properties I buy are basically for um, for, for use. I don't, I don't buy property to let them out. Right. Okay, there we go. So thanks for that question, Jared. I so, think it's actually a good idea, though, at the moment. I reckon I reckon the pod market's going, going to skyrocket. You should get a few. Get, get a few. Get me one. I'll take it. It's all right. You can put it in my name, reduce your tax, all that sort of stuff. Listen, you're already obscenely overpaid. No, you can, right, you right, can right. afford your own property. <laughs> That's true. I can barely feed my family, Jim, as it is. He's, he's not married. No. He goes off to Thailand every now and then. Oh, so I don't geez. know what goes on there. Yeah, you don't want to stay where I go. I'm not going there. I'm going somewhere else, but you want to give it away. Yeah, all right. So, <laughs> I'll keep going. So I've got a question from Josh, which is completely off topic, but this is a good one. So do you want to read it out, Josh, or me to ask Jim? Hi, Jim. Um, this is a bit of a religion. Um, do you believe in afterlife? Yeah, I do. Look, I'm a Christian. I am, yes. So, <laughs> but I don't know that afterlife, I have a wonderful life right now, actually. I have a wonderful marriage and a great business and stuff. I don't know, I think the afterlife's going to be as much fun, quite frankly. But uh, So I'll, I'll stay in this one as long as I can. <laughs> <laughs> What about you guys? I won't know, obviously. You don't have to answer if you don't want to, but I don't know. Are you very religious? Or obviously, we know Jim's religious. I certainly was brought up with um, Christianity. Um, I don't, I'm not practising, but I have my beliefs. But it's just that unknown quantity. I like to think there's somewhere nice that you go to, yeah. for sure. Mm -hmm. yeah, and you're with nice people that you love. Mm. Mm. That's the biggest thing. Mormons have the best belief, actually. They, uh, I used to be in the, with, with them, but they believe that after you can you be... used to be a Mormon. Yeah, yeah, for many years. Very disciplined church. I don't, some of their beliefs are very funny, but very great discipline and structure and very great support. Very Did you have to go and do this thing where you go around for two years and knock on doors and no, stuff? No, I wasn't that young. <laughs> I was already married. But, so you know, they don't ask you. Only, only the young people do it. Yeah. But um, you know, they believe that marriage can be forever. So you're actually literally married to the same person for time and eternity. Oh, and you keep on having kids in the afternoon. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything worse. I know you, I know you might be thinking. That's about. why you go off to Thailand. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to South America this year, so I'm mixing it up. Mm. So that's, that's, I don't know, a few franchises. I don't know, could you think of anything worse than that? I don't know. No answer? All right, no answers, no partners. We'll move on. We'll move on from that one. Hey, listen, you find the right person and you will want to be married forever. I tell you what. We've had 18 years, Lee and myself, and it's wonderful. And it just wants to go on forever. That, that's what my perfect life would be. And that's the perfect answer. And if Lee's watching at home, it's, he does mean that. He does, doesn't just say for lip service. People think that he says that, you know, for lip service. But it's genuinely, you know, they're very... Uh, well, we're genuinely besotted husband. It sickens our children no end. <laughs> <laughs> Come up and try and cuddle the mother in the kitchen. They roll their eyes and, you know... You know what teenagers are like. You're a bit of romantic. You obviously do your anniversary thing when you do the... Yeah, every, every year. on, on that, but 20th, 20th April, we go back to the railway station where we first met. That's our anniversary. 
Not a bad anniversary. Do you do a dinner there or nothing? Or what do you do? Yeah, we go and have dinner. Don't yeah. touch that railway station for all night. That'd be a bit boring. Oh, I think you might set up a table there. <laughs> I don't know. No, we go there and we actually, we, as much as we can, we reenact our meeting. Do they change it? You reenact it? Well, we reenact it, yes. Right. Because, because she was up on the platform and I was, I was walking up towards her and she saw this funny looking guy waddling up with his decrepit clothes and the worst haircuts he'd ever seen. <laughs> Lee, watch, Lee watches my, she, she cuts my hair now because he wants me to be respectable in public. But, <laughs> Of course, there's less and less hair, so it gets easier every year. But uh, yeah. but then we go out and have dinner. So that's that's our that's our anniversary. That's every single year on the twentieth. On the twentieth of April. Yeah. So which train station is that? So people can maybe it's come. Houston. So Houston. All right. Well, there we go. Houston. No, you can't come. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, how it works. I'm actually doing it to see how the reaction goes. I want, to, I want to actually see how it works. Like, you go positioning their wall. Well, it's because well, they, they changed the railway station now, so it's a different platform. So we're trying to work out how to reenact it when they look the same at all. Oh, really? But you actually go and you scout it out, you go and work it out, and then you act it out, and then. I'm actually genuinely interested in how this yeah, works. Yeah, we, we go and we sort of reenact our meeting, yes. Live stream, we should live stream the reenactment. Yes. It's not on a Wednesday night, is it? Because if it's on a Wednesday night, we might have to. It's, what time, but it's different every year, of course. We do it from the Hughesdale train station. We can sit there. Yeah. Right. So, what happened? She was on the, she was on the platform. And I walked up and she saw this guy who was a businessman. He, he thought it was being somebody very plush and, you know, expensively dressed. And here's this guy, this shabby old coat with this <laughs> dreadful haircut. She thought, this is not no businessman I've ever seen. And then she saw the car. She said she had never in her whole life, and leaves from China, she's never, ever been in such a decrepit car as what I was driving <laughs> in those days. Was this the white Volvo? <laughs> I was one of the Volvo's, I think, yeah. yeah. It was just battered and it was old. She couldn't believe it. What kind of businessman is this bloke? She was convinced I had no money at all. <laughs> this guy must be completely poor. She still married me. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, happily ever married. I was better looking in those days. Not by much, but I was. <laughs> what about you guys? You much, I know it's putting you on the spot and I didn't prepare for this question at all. Is there, do you do anything like that, what Jim does on his anniversary? What do you guys do? What, is, what does Stuart do for you, Oh, Greg? he's not a romantic. No. It's lucky he remembers. He, he actually <laughs> usually does remember, but that's probably about it. And yeah. what do you get a gift or do you get for yeah, dinner? Yeah, flowers, maybe, yeah, if we can. What would um, you want though? What would you want? Perfect situation. Oh, look, yeah, uh, it's just nice spending time together without yeah. kids sometimes, so that's probably, mm, yeah. Bang. As much as we enjoy having the kids around, it's nice to just reconnect, so. There we go, Stuart. Yeah. And where's Jill? What are you um, doing? Yeah, we don't do a lot. Um, we did renew our vows on our 25th wedding anniversary and now we're heading up to 35, so. 35? Yeah, wow. yeah, wow. so. 25, we took our family over to Thailand and renewed our vows with our kids and their partners there. That so you got Thailand as well, mate. Yeah, we've been to Thailand, Thailand a few times. times. <laughs> yeah. And that was really special. Yeah, really no, special. Oh, it's good to hear. So, so you're 35, 35 years married? Mm, yeah. I didn't know you'd like to marry at five. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was 18. <laughs> He's a charmer thank as well. You. Thank you. He's a charmer as well. Well done, Jim. Yeah, well, everyone knows my age now. Great. <laughs> <Right. laughs> so here we go for a bit of a question which is a bit offbeat as well. And this will be a good one for you, Jim. Uh, Nick walton has gone. Who does he think uh, will run against uh, run for the Democrats against Trump? We ask everything. Oh my goodness, I would not know. It's... You been following it closely, or? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah but I mean, Joe Joe Biden's obviously the the favourite, but the favourites don't usually win these things. And you've got all these fanatical lefties and so forth. Uh, it's it's pretty weird. They're going really extreme. I reckon Trump's going to get it. I really think he'll, you think he'll win. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm a conservative, but I have pretty mixed feelings about that guy. He's, he's a, but all the same, I think he'll win. Most most American presidents get get a second term. Mm. So, you, have, what are your thoughts on him, though? Like, I, we might have talked about it a little bit before, but well, as I said, he's a conservative. He likes limited taxes and stuff, and and I think things of that nature. But um, he, he's just such a such a wild card. He just does <laughs> crazy things, and and yeah. he's upsetting the whole world order. I mean, just dumping huge tariffs on, having starting trade wars and things. It's 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 not not what you prefer. Mm. I mean, like, there's been some great candidates, people like Mitt Romney, for example. I would love to see him as president. Someone called Mitt. Mitt Romney. Mitt. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's a he's a he's a he's a he's an amazing guy. He's a great guy. Mm -hmm. Genuinely decent, good man, family man, smart. A lot of good things. There's been very very good candidates. I I'm not quite sure we have to have Trump. But I understand why people vote for him because I think that the basically what goes on in politics is almost a war between elites. Mm. You know, the Labor Party in Australia is run by the, the, the greeny elites in the central suburbs of Melbourne and Sydney and, you know, the ABC and all that kind of trendy cosmopolitan crowd. That's the Labor Party and the, 
Liberal Party tends to be the, the wealthy business owners and, and so forth, executives. I, I don't know that either party really represents ordinary people very well. And I think that's what Trump appealed to, people who don't like the elites. So I, I um, like, like um, Hillary Clinton said, bitter people holding on to God and guns. I mean, that sort of contempt for ordinary people that they have. Mm. And, and I see a lot of that in politics in Australia, not perhaps as bad. So I understand why people want, vote for somebody like Trump, who appears to vote to to speak for them, but I don't think he does either, really. Yeah. Going to add to that, Jill, or Beck? I don't know if you follow U.S. politics, and I'll just put it to you. I'll just put the question to the guests as well. What do you think of him when he got in? Did you like? Were you like me when I was like, nah, no way, it's ever going to happen. No, it's going to happen. A bit of a gambling man, I did not bet on him getting in. I so wasn't I that shocked by it, to be honest. You weren't shocked no, by it. I wasn't yeah. shocked when he was um, elected, and I wouldn't be shocked if he was re-elected. I just thought. Yeah. yeah, he's got his he's got his supporters. Mm, definitely. definitely. Biggest shock was Scott Morrison getting in. The Liberals getting back in. Oh, that, that was shock. amazing. <laughs> that was good news. Good shock. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I agree. But not, a, not only is he conservative, he's my kind of conservative. He's he's a he's a committed Christian, very strong family man. I think he's a great guy actually. I was really pleased about that one. Trump, mm, I probably wouldn't have voted for him, quite frankly. Yeah. I, I think it's Trump, I always remember, I don't know, I used to like the wrestling when I was younger, the WWE. And there was a, he actually got in the ring and got, gave someone a close, got clothes hanging and all this sort of stuff. And um, mm -hmm. now that person's president, which is quite funny. Mm. Um, I'll get to a question here from Dwayne, which is on a via the other channels. And he's gone, is there any talk about Jim's antennas changing names to Jim's Digital? Which is a good question. Yes, that has been discussed. And, and I, think, I think it should at least be co-branded because you think of antennas as sticking an antenna on the roof. But that's actually less and less of what they do. So we had the, um, for example, we had all the cabling put through in, in our units here at the conference center. That was all about Jim's antennas. Yeah. They're experts at cabling. They can set up Wi-Fi. They can, they can wire the house for this and that. It's, it's, it, they're very much digital specialists. If you want something wrong with your TV or, or anything else which is to do with, you know, satellite anything i think home automations are going to be a big business yeah. and that's the sort of uh the stuff they're going to go to the thing is antennas is kind of like a bit of a declining business but everything the digital stuff is going up like that mm. and that's that's the space that they're in so mm. it's, it's a great growth industry but i think the branding is is needs to be do you do you think it so you do think it probably needs to shift to that eventually or what do you guys think actually from the call center perspective yeah so i guess um it, it is moving more towards that digital yeah. space and Definitely. the requests we get are more um towards you know the cabling and obviously we still get the antenna call and people don't even know they do it though that's one of no, the problems and, mm. yeah they, I think they want something done with cabling and internal of the house they don't recognize that jim's antennas is really really good at that kind of stuff mm. well, what, what's the advice do you think they should just pull the trigger early then or late later or what do you think I think they should co-brand. They should put both stickers up on their trailers and they should, they should promote both. So I know Test and Tag's done something similar. Mm. They obviously have Jim's Fire Safety. Oh, yeah. and they have well, that that's, a, that's a different thing, yeah. Right. So, so they, they do that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It makes a lot of sense as well because obviously those keyword searches that people punch into Google, right? They're not going to, mm. you know, if you're punching your home installation system, you want a page on your site which ranks and gets indexed mm. by Google and obviously appears and you can then mm. run ads and all that sort of stuff. So um, the good question, Dwayne, I, you know, I think as Jim said, in a, as ladies in the call centre, um, the co-branding thing, it's probably the thing to investigate and maybe talk to your divisional about. Okay, so I'll get on to a question here from the live feed. So Joe Marsden has gone, hi, I'm here from the theatre watching live from Foothills. So hi to Joe up the back there. Hi, Joe. Thanks for leaving a comment. Um, and Heather Campbell's gone, hi, Heather from Jim's Dog Wash. Uh, so Bacho Bay. I think she was down at Bacho Bay, last training. Lovely lady. I know she's a groomer. So if one of your a groomer to come on board. So Hava, hopefully you're going well. Okay, so Richard Bergwijn's put a question on here and he's gone, has anyone asked him about why he chose the location for the national office and when they decided they wanted to create their own call centre on site at Jim's? It's a question for everyone. Well, we've always had a call centre on site, even, even when it was basically in, in our, one from a flat next to our house in Blackburn. But um, what happened was this was, uh, what is it, 2003, long time ago. And uh, we were looking for a site um, we had a sort of rented premises before that and we just went to the council about one particular site and they said there's a um, disused university site in Murabak. And because council centre like is doing the same kind of thing as the past, they, um, they, 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 they showed it to us and we had a look at it and it seemed very suitable. Mm. So that's how we came here, was council recommendations. I think the council may have been better than they, in those days than they are now. <laughs> <laughs> Couldn't be worse. Yeah, this Yarra Council, people, if you're watching, do harass them, get the gym's gym and get into them. 
Um, I was going to say for you guys, obviously 14, was it 14 years you've been in call centre, but you've done it before? 15 years 15 I've been years. with gyms, yeah. So was, have, gyms, was that before? I came for my interview here. Okay, so, so was in the here? building at the top that was burnt down, yeah. I came for my interview in a, a corporate suit because I came from a corporate environment. <laughs> <laughs> and I met Jim and Greg Pizzolo mm. and I saw a massive huntsman on the wall. And I thought, what have I done? <laughs> uh, I didn't know what I was doing, but it was the best decision I made. It was coming back to down to earth people, so refreshing, um, and haven't ever looked back. So there's mm. not a lot of suits around here, are there? <laughs> nah, I we soon got rid of them. I well, think people when they wear a suit around here stand out like an absolute sore <laughs> thumb because um, you're so used to obviously. Yeah. yeah. That's you know, I know right. I'm shocking, so I wear thumbs and, and shorts and stuff. <laughs> No. Somebody brings their dog to work too in, in our office. So mm. yes, yeah. and so you have kids around, so it's exactly it's, it's pretty informal and very noisy too. It's not not very corporate. No, it's definitely very noisy, and um, the certain people in the office will know who they are. I think, if, yeah. I think the call centre side too, Jim. When you remember Melbourne, we started with. Mm. We used to have Western Victoria, which Robin had. Obviously Queensland. Um, there was Sydney, Adelaide. We took quite a few of the calls. So all the call centres were separate in those days. We yeah. took a few. And We've then, gradually taken over all the other call centres, yeah. which is what works a lot better. In, including New Zealand now. So that's um, a good question now. Let's go into that about New Zealand. And so you guys obviously take the calls from New Zealand. Do you find there's any, when people ring up from the, any, any issues with that coming up from calling from New Zealand? Or? Initially we had, we've had a few customers that were a little bit less tolerant, like we're you know, in India or something. Oh. Or, you know, they, they, they just see it that call centres that are outsourced you're not going to get a local person. And I remember having a conversation with a client one day, actually saying, she said, well, how are you going to find someone local? And I said, you trust the system and we will find someone local for you. And I said, we're not going to fly someone over there. And she kind of put it together and thought, okay. So, you know, and I don't think now where there's many issues with the amount of different call centres are outsourced, I think it actually, and we've proven ourselves, we had to go through that proof, approving, didn't we? <laughs> Approval with franchisors as well, because there was a bit of resistance from franchisors in New Zealand, and rightly so. So we kept an office in New Zealand for 18 months with two staff, and then when one of them resigned, we transitioned the whole operation to Melbourne. And do you think it's obviously a lot better being having it all in together? Or? Yeah, yeah. Well, we loved going and visiting our, our guys in New Zealand. And we had great staff there. Yeah, yeah they were like right. we have great staff there. They were it's like family, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Our staff yeah. we've been it's very, very lucky with in, in both, but... And we brought them over here for a week and they had a week here and stayed on site and got to see the larger team and how it works um, and started at six o'clock in the morning because of the time difference, but that was all right. We, we do that now <laughs> yeah, anyway yeah. because of New Zealand. And what about, is Canada, they're obviously we're in Canada as well, so Canada and the, is UK, obviously UK? No, they, no they, just they, with Canada. Yes. Just, yeah. just with Canada. So do Canada, Canada obviously do their own thing? We take um, their calls for three hours per day on okay. the weekdays, yes. Yeah, so. And how does that work? How does that go with obviously yeah, different accents? Yeah, they're actually um, great people. They just love a chat, so <laughs> it's great. They're, they're really excited to talk to us. So yeah, incredibly It's friendly. actually really, really Are nice. people surprised it's an Australian voice? Like, are they yeah. here that they're not offshore or anything like that? No, they're not, they're not taken aback by it at all. Yeah. Um, I, I think, you know, we, we can communicate quite easily with them. We can find um, what they need, where they, where they need it. Uh, and that's the same with New Zealand. As time's gone on, um, our staff have become more... Um, I guess in the know about their their suburbs and their mm. little quirky things where things don't sound the way they actually spell and mm. you just get to know things over time. Do you think it's, do you think it's they, obviously a shame? They, Sorry, you can they did they did a survey of who has the best accent of English speakers all over the world. You know, Indian, French, mm -hmm. whatever. And number one was Irish, and number two is Australian. Oh, yeah. Really? So they, they seem to like Australian yeah. accent. I think that's the sexiest accent. That was the one. <laughs> it was. <laughs> I saw it. It was. Trust me, it was. It was, it was. I've tested it as well. It works. But um, I, I love hearing Australian. If you watch a TV, American TV program, and there's, a, and there's an Australian accent, I love hearing that. I love hearing our own, our own voice. And New Zealanders are almost as good. They just have a funny way of saying they say jums instead of jums. Mm. Right. <laughs> Don't quite speak. Almost perfect English, but not quite. So guys, make sure uh, we've got around 50 people still watching, which is great. So make sure you leave a comment, a question, or anything on the live feed there. So I'm just going to go through a few of the acknowledgements here. So we've still got Jim's memings tuned in again. So I just actually want to get your thoughts on that. What do you guys actually think of all the Jim's memings stuff and the logo comp we obviously run? And what's your opinion on that sort of stuff? I think it's been fantastic. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, Jim hasn't done a lot of media and obviously he's enjoying it. And, you know, as Beck said, people used to in the course and is, is Jim real. And it's, I just think it makes it more real. And because Jim is so transparent, people, you know, really appreciate that. 
Um, nothing gets held back. <laughs> That's right. I, um, I say my stupid things at times too. I really yeah. put my foot in my mouth. I get someone to kick. Which is yeah, always a risk of doing these live things. Which yeah, is like, yes. you can't yes. retract it, can you? No, you can't. But the logo stuff, I thought that was great, the logo generator. It was a lot of fun. Yeah. Well, it's still there actually, so if you do want to head to gyms.net, there's a logo generator button there, and it's um, really fun to do it, and you can download it. We've actually got a few people who are busboys up in um. When, when are you getting, when is Jim's Cobloaf going to come over here and, and have, have... Well, Jim's Cobloaf is coming. <laughs> Denise is organised. I think they need to wait for the September school holidays for kids, uh, for the other uh, one to come along. This is the winner of the Mimi Cobloaf. Yes, yeah. so we do have merch. We've got the Jim's Cobloaf and jumpers and some hats, and there's bags, and we'll order one along, and we'll film it, mm -hmm. all that sort of stuff. You have to put a hat on and have a bit of Cobloaf, and we'll do all that sort of stuff. Have you had cobbler before? No, I don't think so. No. I think you'll like it. Mm. Yeah, yeah. I like, I like, I like, I like Baker's Delight bread. That's really nice. But the only trouble is you go to Baker's Delight and they always have these little sweet things on the counter and you have one, you end up buying like that, <laughs> which I don't need. <laughs> well, you're quite happy with um, what Eric from um, Jim's Mobile Cafe gave you because obviously you don't drink coffee and he gave you a nice, um, was yeah. it a hot chocolate, Eric? Was it a hot chocolate with a nice big... Yeah. Very, very nice, but you wouldn't want to eat that, drink that too often because it's very rich. It was very nice. It had these little chocolate sprinkles on top. So Jim's mobile, mobile cafe, great business. Hey, and we've got a video of that. We'll put it online. Um, I won't say what you said it actually was like because I don't think you remember. It was quite funny. But get a bit of a sugar here. There's a lot of sugar in it, and you're buzzing around the supplies, which was great. You went, <laughs> went and met around afterwards. Yeah, like, like this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You like a little kid. So just tuning, if people are watching, Jim's Memeing's watching. So you know the Jim's Memeing page, it has around 25,000 followers now, which is great. So Jim's Memeing, maybe give a bit of a congratulations to Jim's Memeing. Matt's watching, 25,000 he's made a page up. Wow. We haven't had to pay for anything, which is great. It's a bit of advertising and stuff like that. Amazing. And they have a group called Jim's Lawn Posting within it, which is 10,000 members. And basically wow. what these people do, we love them, I think they're all sub 30. They go around there and they call spotting gyms in the wild. So they love the plumbing beds. <laughs> so they love they go around taking, I've found another beauty on the road and they'll go bang and I'll take it off. It's dog wash, I've seen another beauty. Jim's cleaning, I'll take another beauty. This thing is like 180 likes, 200 likes, 50 comments, all that sort of stuff. Wow. It's a great way of promoting our cross divisional services. Yeah. Not many, not many people know about it, but um, it's really good. So keep up the work, Jim's memeing. I look forward to meeting you guys it's, down it's soon. It's a funny thing that the appeal of this, this logo with, with people like, um, my, my daughter, teenage daughter, has a birthday party, right? And somebody finds out that her father is Jim, had no idea. And immediately wants a selfie and, and all this kind of stuff too. <laughs> Are you doing a bit more selfies now? Are you getting a few more requests? Oh, yeah. I do get, I do put in a lot of things, ask Jim for a selfie when you come it's home. It's very so. strange. Very strange? <laughs> do you smile at him? I try to, I'm not very good at it. <laughs> <laughs> I hate being photographed. I'm the worst, you worst, are. worst person to be photographed. Yeah. I cannot believe that I actually... My own fault for putting my name on 4,000 trailers. Right here, but <laughs> I am. Yeah, because you don't know, like, because obviously when people take photographs, they like put arms around people and stuff like that, but you're always very. Yeah. Mm. Well, I don't mind if they're ladies, if they're. <laughs> anyway. You don't like to put an arm around you like that, Mark? No. Depends who, yes. So if you get a photo of Jim next time, put your arm around him, especially if you're a guy. <laughs> <laughs> Most of them are bigger than me, too, so you have to look up like that, so. Yeah. yeah. No, but I know a lot of the dog wash crew, they come along and take a selfie with you and they put up on Instagram, which is great. So I love more divisions to actually do that. So when divisions actually come to training with Frank Resorts and Z's, we encourage you, please take photos, upload them on Instagram and Facebook and use the hashtag Gym Script. So what I do is I search the hashtag Gym Script every morning and I will share anything that's up with that hashtag. So dog wash always has a lot of great content which they put up. So I encourage every other division, whether you're from mowing, cleaning, uh, to my pest control, mobile cafe, take photos with Jim, use the hashtag Gym Script and we'll share it. We want to do as much social posts as we can. I'd love more divisions to use Instagram and Facebook. It's where it's going, especially our next market, the under-35s. Instagram is more of the platform they use as opposed to Facebook. So definitely photos with Jim, any content with Jim, hashtag Jim's group. Now, Paul, now Paul Boylan's gone with a good uh, little comment here, which I'll put on there. He's gone, is Jim's more like uh, buying a job, not a business? Question mark. If, if a person is interested in buying a job, they, shouldn't, they, they should get a job. It, it's a business. <laughs> it's totally, totally different. And, and if you look at it as a job, you can not tell the attitude of what, well, it's your job to find new work. No, it's not. We'll do certain things for you. It's up to you to do the other things you need to, like doing the freebies for, that you'll get paid for and, mm. and doing your self-promotion and those kind of things. It's, it's a big issue. We have to try and explain to people that it is a business. It's got the upside of a business. It's got the potential downside if you don't do it right. Not a job. No guaranteed salary. Obviously, with franchising in the media, that's a comment that actually we see a lot from the news articles and stuff. Actually, right, you know, mm. you're better off getting a job because you work your own business. Obviously, with some of the retail food group stuff that's been going on, 
where they're earning you know peanuts or whatever mm. uh, people say if you do buy a franchise you are sometimes looking to buy a job so obviously for franchisors out there obviously anyone who says that sort of thing no nah, no go well it's, it's like somebody comes and interested in the franchise and the only question they ask is how much do i get paid mm. it's not a good question because you're thinking in terms of of a salary and it's not like that they should be asking i mean how much can you earn is a reasonable question and, and they should check that thing out. But understanding how it works and how the work comes in and what the obligations are, that's the kind of questions we like to see. Well, I had a question last week, which I haven't got in front of me. It's from one of the, the people who work in the, the Haydars cleaning office. And it was regarding franchisors, because we've got franchisors here in conferences and all that sort of stuff, and franchisees. And he, he basically said, how do, you, how do you identify if a franchisee is good enough to make the leap to a franchisor? What are some of the things to look out for was the question. Well, I would look for three things. I would look for somebody who's making good money. If they're not making, well, at, at least, at the very least $2,000 a week, um, they, they can't be a franchisor because they haven't figured out how to do it themselves and they can't teach anybody else. Obviously, we need somebody with a good customer service record, but most of our franchises are pretty good that way. And the third thing we look for is we look for somebody who enjoys helping other people, not not as a job because they have a passion for it. And so often our franchisors come out of our trainers. So a trainer is somebody who takes somebody out on the mm. road, shows them the, the, the ropes, normally doesn't get paid for it, and they'll often spend a long time in the evening advising and helping the people they took out because they've become sort of, you know, friends. That's the sort of person we, we would try and get as a franchisor if we possibly can. What are some common characteristics, Beck and Jill, that you identify with what make good franchisees and Zors would just make it open? What makes a good gyms person from what you experience? Um, I think... Um, Obviously, yeah, your husband's a franchisor, yeah, so we went from um, franchisee to franchisor. I think so. um, definitely, you know, wanting to help people, wanting to see people succeed, um, being able to pass on some of your knowledge and skills and, and help people grow, I guess, that's... Um, you know, really important and also just being able to interact with, with clients and people and just I think just being generally a people person mm. is really important. That's a common thread that we always hear is people persons mm. do really well. Like they might not have to be the most brilliant in terms of you know, uh, you know business wise or whatever, but the people who can relate to everyone else and mm. all that sort of stuff. Okay, so I was gonna ask just a quick question for my own interest. Obviously are you worried this is just a off the topic question. Are you worried with the advent of online leads? So obviously we have online leads versus obviously calls taken. Obviously that affects your business model mm. if the more online leads come through. How are you gonna how do you think that's gonna affect your business moving forward? Well it's definitely gonna have an impact at yeah. some point. Um, we know that it's creeping up. Um, phone calls still outweigh the online booking system, but that will It's about seventy thirty now, I think. Yeah, but um, so the people still like, and even people that do book online will still ring the call centre and confirm the booking. Oh, really? Yeah. 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 So the people like to know that they're getting it, and particularly different generations as well, without doubt. Um, but yeah, I'm not overly concerned right now. It hasn't changed that much since the book, online booking system came in. How long ago, Jim? Probably... It's been quite a few years it's now. Been a while, it wasn't yeah. very big eight, until... Eight, eight, nine... nine. Now yeah. that it's all automated, it's, yeah. it's different. Um, mm -hmm. But we still take, we take a lot more calls than what... That is just than, jobs. Yeah, than mm. it, it's not just leads we're obviously dealing with. So, um, it, yeah, it's hard to know what the impact will be. Um, yeah, so it's not just leads you do, but you help franchisees and obviously yeah. source with work requirements and... Yeah. Previous clients. Oh, even previous just, clients. Yeah, previous clients calling. Mm. Um, Complaints. I think what we took, yeah, something like 700,000 calls last year. I don't, I think leads would make up half of that. Oh, well, really? So, what were leads? Yeah. I don't. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, yeah, there it is. Is that it? Three hundred thirty. That's the last twelve months. So three hundred and thirty-seven leads, brand new jobs we've set that's out. Right. Yeah. Um, so that's not representative, but it hovers around that level. It anyway. hovers around the half. Mm. So what else is in this? So obviously, you're helping out past past clients. Mm -hmm. Good plates. Uh, work requirements. Yep. Um, obviously, doing stuff for gyms online for them, maybe. Yeah. Is there anything else that you obviously take? Obviously, some unserviced jobs as well. Unserviced jobs, yes. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yeah. do you have the, what was the unserviced stats there? Do you have them down there at all? I don't have the unserviced stats. No, we don't. You might know that. No, but it's, it's, but it's about 140, I think, around that figure. Last year was over 180,000. Yeah, in total, but I think 140 is derived from the call centre. Yeah, yeah. That's probably right. Yeah. Is there anything else on that sheet that we didn't get to that I haven't mentioned there at all? You're loving our sheep. <laughs> We're going to talk about how nice we are and what wonderful staff we have. Um, when we talk about our service codes, you know, for our staff, they're walking encyclopedias of gyms, literally. Mm. They're the most knowledgeable people and I take my hat off every day to them. Um, we're very, very fortunate to have such good staff and 
it is a shame when we lose them, but we deal with it. Um, but when and they come to us, they, they know so much. Mm. They're really in fountains of knowledge, which is a tremendous advantage. So yeah. in actual fact, our, our more and more, we, we, we take our future leaders from the call centre. Yeah, which, pretty which, much. Which is nice from your point of view too, though. The negative is you've got to keep on training new people and you lose your best ones. But it also gives a... Gives them an opportunity. Gives to, it's yeah. an opportunity to grow and, and to rise. And people can, can, you know, obviously you can't afford to pay them as much as we can. Mm. If somebody's successful in a role as management and sales within gyms, they can actually do very, very well. Correct. Do you give them a recruitment fee every time you get a staff member? Like we don't get any spotters fee, no. <laughs> no <don't>. spotters fee? <laughs> it's about time it paid up, didn't it? don't you reckon? Oh. <laughs> we, we cost us a bit to drain them, but we're happy and we don't hold the staff back. We're happy to them to move on because as we've got a pretty flat structure. So there's not a lot of room for growth. So it, it gives them the opportunity. Well, how intense is, it, is your training program? Obviously, when someone comes in, because there's so many mm. unique, it's a really unique system, obviously. You have that many service codes and you have to have all those knowledge with other things with gyms online and all that sort of stuff. How, how intense is your training program from your staff? Look, the, the, fir the first two weeks are pretty intense, um, but they don't stop learning, I would say, for probably the first three months. If not longer. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it takes, yeah, on average, probably three months to, to get up to speed to be you know, where, the, where the more senior operators are. So. And how many make the cut? Obviously, you have an intake that comes in. Does that process you find weed, you know, just weed the people out, obviously? Well, in you know, 14 imagine. years, we've probably had three people that just didn't get it. Yeah. Mm. They just couldn't get their head around it. Um, but that's not bad, because mm. obviously we've had a lot of... We don't have a lot of turnaround, but we do... We do... The average course in our life is two to three years, and we've got... <coughs> Excuse me. Some staff that have been well, a lot of four, yes, seven plus years. Yeah, um, seven plus. We've got probably... four that are over ten years. Yeah. Like you know, so the area is a, an attraction too. They're not driving far to work. So there's a few reasons, and we do create that culture. We work hard at it. But just to give you an example of our staff, I think. Do you want to talk about this lady? Oh yeah. So we have yeah. we have regular callers who call every fortnight to check. You know, oh. One in particular, one older older lady that calls every fortnight to check when her mowing franchisee is coming, and we know her by name. Um, her franchisee will call and let us know when he's going out. Um, most recently, it was her, it was she was next due to have her lawns mowed on her birthday, so mm. it's a really personalised service for her. We send an email out and say, you know, so-and-so is calling again, just, you know, let her know when he's next due out, because she has, she's a bit forgetful. Um, you and actually prompt that franchisee, though. The franchisee yeah. is fantastic. Yeah, he's, he's lovely. And your staff. And she's, she's beautiful. She's lovely. And, and the staff actually look forward to having a little chat with her and, and um, being able to you know, just brighten her day a little bit when she does give us a mm. call, so. It's nice. Yeah, it is nice. And that's actually a benefit for people watching at home who aren't uh, in the gym's family, but that type of service and that type of level, if you are a business owner as well, thinking to come and to be a franchisee, that's the type of thing when we talk about support that you do get, and that's something we actually haven't mentioned before. Mm. So it's really great to have you guys on and hear about that. So is there any messages for franchisees or franchisors you want to maybe tell them about obvious, uh, anything you want to get across to them or? Nice putting that. Nice putting on the spot a bit, but That's obviously okay. using you coming in and maybe interacting with you guys a bit uh, more when they're here. Or they're, yeah, franchisees are welcome anytime. We encourage it right through training to build better relationships. Um, and I think, you know, most franchisees are pretty good. They know that we can fix things as long as they call us. And quite often, if they want any advice about gyms online or FMS or anything, just give us a call. Mm. We're always happy to help. Yeah, that's what we're there for. We're there for the franchisees, we, the franchisors yeah. and their clients. That's, they pay for the service and we want to serve them. Do many like a franchisees drop in? Have they dropped in before? Or? We see a lot more come through with the training yeah. um, program. So a lot do come um, of their own accord after the training finishes um, in the evening and, and ask to have a listen to some calls and, and introduce themselves. And it's really nice to be able to do that. So. Do you think it's important for a franchisee to come and actually have the ability to listen to a call? Or? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, they, can, they can really see it from um, you know, how, it, how it really happens. And I think it gives a better understanding of, of the processes we follow and, and where it could potentially go wrong. Um, and, and you know, if it does go wrong, they've got a better understanding of how that might have happened. So. Yeah, because obviously you might have some, obviously if there's a wrong lead allocation for whatever, obviously mm. people that might get a bit angry, but obviously if they have, take that opportunity to come and actually see what happens, know yeah. the process is in place and probably be more empathetic to the cause. Exactly. There's a few more questions on here. So Haydar, hey, he's saying, he's got lovely work, ladies. Thank you for all your help. So Haydar is a gym cleaning divisional. He's on next week as well. So his dad will get along and pump up the show and probably have 150 viewers at a time, Jim. So we'll get right up there next week. And uh, I think Susie Gibbs, hi, are you there too, from Joe Marsden. And one more question here, which was about the book, which I want to get to really quickly. Jared Vanderbilt has gone, what's the most interesting thing he discusses in his book? And that's appropriate because we're going to give that away. In your Jim's book, what's the most interesting thing that you would think was written about you? 
written about me yeah. or the story or anything like that. I don't, I don't think I'm very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was my surprising story in the book. Surprising story, surprising to me. There's yes. a lot of things I didn't know. Because she interviewed 100 people and, and all kinds of stuff about things that went on in the early days of gyms. I had no idea. I didn't even know who bought my first regional franchises. It was different <laughs> to what I thought. They had all these deals stitched up amongst themselves. I, I found out about all this. What's going on here? And what about bio history? What's the most interesting thing out of that? That was probably what his question was for. I referred to the wrong book. I think it was bio history. <laughs> bio history? What's the most interesting thing out of that? I, the thing about bio history is, is it's this whole concept that, that society is driven by changes in individual character, and that is epigenetically determined. So what it, what it implies is that problems as widespread as, as um, mental illness and drug addiction and, and even poverty could actually be massively alleviated at very, very minor cost if we understood how these things work. It's, actually, it's capable of changing the world in a way that's unbelievable, that you could go to the poorest country on earth and in a generation it could become you know, wealthy, democratic, peaceful, whatever, if you understood the, how, to, how to affect human society. And it could, it could help people to, to prosper in their lives, to have happy marriages, to be successful in, 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 in businesses, to do all kinds of things, if we understood the epigenetic basis of behaviour and, and how to influence that. At, at very, very little cost. So now you've developed something which you've been <coughs> testing on rats. Mm. And you're, you're nearly going to... Is it far away from doing the human trials? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm actually going to go out on Monday and I'm going to ask her to give me some stuff that I'm going to try, trial some of these new treatments on myself to see how, how they might work. Can we do are you going to document it? Are you going to film it? Yeah. Well, I can document it if you like. Okay. Yeah, sure. Well, there we go. So Jim's going to try, try those things on himself. And that is biohistory.org, and there's a whole video explaining it as well. I think one of the interviews he did with Stephen Mullen is like 100,000 views or something. Yeah. So if you punch in Jim Pemmon into YouTube, that interview will come up, and that'll probably give you a good synopsis of what it's all about. And that's available on biohistory.org. Also, gyms.net, under Meet Jim, there's a tab with those books available as well. So every customer or fan is an audio book you can get for free. Biohistory you can get as well. And Jim's book's the one you've got to pay for. And that was with Catherine. So... Thank you guys for doing this. Um, no problem. Mate. I really, I really do appreciate it. And hopefully, um, franchise Z's and franchise Z's can maybe watch this back later on and obviously hear some things. Is there anything you want to maybe leave before that we haven't discussed, or anything you want to let, let them know? Oh, I think you said. You said enough. I think you said we enough. said you said it. You said plenty yeah. of stuff. Got everything there on the sheet? Oh no, I keep referring to the sheet. Everything's on the sheet done. I think we've yeah, pretty good. well gone through our sheet. Yeah, thank you. Cool. I appreciate, <laughs> appreciate the statistics, and I love all the stuff about obviously half the calls being other things. I didn't know that myself. I didn't consider yeah. that. Obviously, before coming on, people just think it's just Dakin leads all day, but it's obviously those little things with that lady, for example, you know, reminding them every two weeks and stuff. That's the extra mile that you guys go to, and that's a fantastic thing to hear, and a great job you do, and we do really appreciate your work, and I'm sure everyone here does as well. Thank you. Um, okay, so let's actually give out these books now. So is there anything that came through as a question <coughs> or anything as a comment that you marked down to give one of these books away? Uh, probably the um, question about the funniest complaint. That was the Funniest complaint? Or I'll go back through that one, and I will write that down and get that signed. What about the, uh, there was another one as well, Jill, anything? So you, oh, um, that was my one too. Because was that your one too? Well, the complaint was funny. Well, you know what's funny? <laughs> two people actually wrote that same question and there's two separate people. Oh, really? All right, so we can give those books to them. Okay. What about you, Jim? Was there anything from the, maybe the, uh, the live questions that come through? Maybe the Trump question or anything like that or the location, stuff like that? The, the surprising thing, that, the, I like that question. Which one was the surprising one? The surprising thing about the book, and I presume they meant by history. Oh, okay, yeah, no worries. I love, I love talking about such right. things. No worries, that's a good one. All right, so Jared, I will DM you and I will send that book out to you and we'll get them all signed. But um, thanks everyone for watching. Uh, we do appreciate it. Next week on Wednesday at 7 o'clock again, we have Haydar and Ali from Jim's Cleaning. And I'm sure that will be a big one, so make sure you leave some questions. I look forward to having them on again. Uh, they really enjoyed it last time, which is why they wanted to come on. Make sure you tune in to uh, the Jim's cast. So this will be made a podcast replay on Tuesday. We'll release two of them. Head to gyms.net as well. You can learn all about Jim under the Meet Jim section. We're putting more stuff. You've been listening to Gary V. So anyone who likes Gary V, the Crushing It book, yeah. we're going to try and replicate a bit of that stuff, but I'm loving it that you enjoy it. So basically what the plan is for anyone who's watching at home, we're going to have all these questions, which we get all these from these live feeds, and when you click on the question, the actual video section will appear yeah. with Jim answering. So, so you, you can go through and look at the questions you want. That one answered... It'd be basically a, a, yeah, an interactive live, it'd be like a, a video library of Q&A. 
So we probably have 50 questions there. You click on it, the actual segment from this or from whatever will come up with Jim talking. Actually, there'll be hundreds of questions by now. There will be a lot. Yeah, there will be a lot. And they they keep on growing. They keep on growing. Obviously, it's a podcast as well. Um, New content every week, so make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel, Facebook and Instagram. Jim also has an account, which is at the Jim Penman, and we do post a lot of stuff to there as well. We want to get Jim as many followers as you can, so give him a follow, please. I want to get to 10,000. 10,000 is the goal. We're up to around, I think, 880 at the moment, but we have a really engaged audience. And uh, until next time, uh, have a good week, and we appreciate Jill and Beck again once again. And thanks to Jim, and thanks everyone who watched today.